All right, welcome to this video. So in this video, we're basically going to learn what are the root causes of diseases such as cancer, diabetes, arthritis, Alzheimer's, autoimmune diseases, hypertension, Parkinson's, basically every disease you know about, there's actually one common variable that is the cause of those diseases. All right, so you're gonna be able to understand what they are uh, in this video. And we're gonna go over what, what actions can you do? Like what's the process of you know, having to resolve these. And so before we jump into that, let's take a look at how this all works, right? Really what we're talking about is chronic, acute and systemic chronic inflammation. And so this inflamed cell basically causes all kinds of system dysfunctions, right? Your gastrointestinal, that's like your stomach, autoimmune nervous system, your heart, your lung, your joints, your skin, and metabolic disorders, all comes from this chronic and acute inflammation. Basically, when your cell is swollen, it just basically cannot function well. It cannot do what it's designed to do. And so what are some of the things that we're seeing in this? Well, let's look at uh, this. And so is this really happening? Like what's, why is America in general actually getting more sick? And so here's an interesting stat between, uh, in an eight year period, so basically between 2001 and 2009, we saw a 23% increase in type 1 diabetes. This is the autoimmune type, right? This is your body attacking itself type. That's an autoimmune disease. That's your body attacking itself. In this article, they talk about alarming rates of increase in autoimmune diseases between this time span, right? And 23% increase is dramatic. This is not going to be from, from evolution. It wouldn't happen this fast. There's something going on that's causing an increase in diseases. And so if you look at, well, what are the, what are some of the consequences of such diseases? Well, if we just look at cancer, right? And so let's look at the cost to treat cancer. We're looking at $10,000 per month just for the, the drugs, right? And cancer is definitely still on the rise. I mean, people are surviving and living with cancer better because of some drug treatments. However, the incidence is still continuing to increase, right? And then we look at well, let's go back to the screen on how does this all work. Essentially, what is happening is we basically have two main concepts, right? The concepts are called the selfish brain and the selfish immune system. And essentially, I spoke about this at an event uh, with a bunch of entrepreneurs from all over the world. And really, this is about um, two main systems that your body would immediately die if these systems became severely dysfunctional. And so because these systems are so important, your body will do everything possible to keep them, these systems alive and functioning well. And those two systems, it's the brain and the immune system. And so what happens is when you start to tax the brain excessively, or you start to tax your immune system excessively, those systems will start to wreak havoc. They'll start to hurt other parts or other systems in your body just to protect itself. It'll like rob and steal from the rest of your body for its own benefit, right? And so that's the case and we look at, all right, so if you were a boat and um, you have holes in the boat, there's basically um, two areas with holes. One area has two holes and one area has three holes. And your goal is obviously you don't want the boat to sink. You wanna be able to plug those holes to stop the water from coming in. And essentially one area is the brain, it has two holes and those two holes comes from uh, chronic stress and chronic sleep deprivation, like poor quality sleep. And the other hole is acute high levels of stress, right? Because the research shows that if you're under chronic levels of stress, or you're just not sleeping well for prolonged periods of time, you're basically taxing your brain in a way where your brain will start to become inflamed. And it starts to release chemicals in the rest of your body and causes a chain reaction that starts to damage your nervous system, right? Included in your brain is your spinal cord, your nerves, they become inflamed and it starts to attack itself basically. And so the other part is acute stress, right? There are studies showing that um, people, let's say PTSD, they've experienced some type of very traumatic incident and it could be decades ago that their bodies are starting to see that is still living with a constant state of heightened inflammation, right? And so some action steps you can take to help reduce some of this is, well, for sleep, I usually recommend uh, simple wearing like blue light blocking glasses two hours before bed. And for stress reduction, you wanna make sure, and there's so many of them, it's sort of beyond the scope to get into all the different systems to reduce stress, but you basically wanna implement some type of system to address the chronic stress levels. And if you have had period 
or an event of a very traumatic, stressful incident, you definitely want to seek um, someone that can help you reframe, right? Reframe that experience. In other words, how to see that experience and actually as a benefit and actually in the way that is serving for your life. And then you will let go of the the perception of it being traumatic, right? So again, there are there are lots of professionals out there that can help you do that. I'm a big fan of seeing an NLP practitioner. They're actually exceptionally skilled at helping you do this. And that's sort of the very psychological clinical way. You can also go spiritual way, like you know, using shamans and spiritual healers to help you with that as well. Both work, just different approaches, right? And so that's basically the brain in terms of how it produces all this inflammation, right? Now, before we get to the other three holes in this other area that has to do with your immune system, we can take a look at, well, is it truly inflammation that's causing all these diseases, right? So I kind of pulled up some uh, research articles, right? And so here's an one that talks about hypertension. This is high blood pressure, looking at how the role of inflammation actually causes high blood pressure, right? And so you, you may be thinking, well, I thought it was salt. I thought it was a kidney issue. And yes, reducing salt does reduce your blood pressure, but you have a high blood pressure because the inflammation is causing the tubes, right? You have these tubes in your kidneys that are trying to filter things. The tubes get swollen and they have less ability to function properly. So you can reduce the load on those tubes by reducing your salt intake, which is great and that works. However, you want to heal those tubes and that comes from reducing systemic inflammation, right? So now we know this as science, which is pretty awesome. So we look at cancer, right? How does inflammation affect cancer? Well, inflammation renders your immune system to be dysfunctional. So your immune system cannot gobble up the cancer cells, right? There's cancer cells um, being produced in your body all the time, but you have sort of Pac-Man going up and gobbling all the little dots, right? And so all the little cancer cells. And so if you have inflammation, Pac-Man is not working. Right? It's not going around eating up the cancer cells. So the cancer cells multiply and grow. And if they grow big enough, they become a tumor. And then that starts to spread in your body. Now, the other way that inflammation causes cancer is your cells, when it replicates, when your cells copies itself, um, it's supposed to copy an ideal um, exact version of itself. But when it's inflamed, it doesn't copy an exact version. It copies a mutated version, right? a different version. And this is not kept in check because there's too much inflammation. That mutated version can grow out of hand. And that, again, is a tumor and thus cancer. And so it's very important to keep your um, inflammation in check. And we now know there's a system, one of the main systems that keeps us in check. It's called the NRF2. I actually wrote about this in a separate post. The NRF2. You can Google NRF2. And again, in the other post, I recommended that you ask your doctor about the NRF2 pathway. If your doctor looks at you like you have two heads and they have no idea what you're talking about, switch doctors, right? If a doctor is not aware of what the NRF2 pathway is, to me, they're not understanding the science of how the body works. And so you can you know, double check your doctor. And a complete side note, you know, when people are, are looking for good doctors, you ask them how many of these and you fill in the blank with whatever disease you're interested in. It could be heart disease. It could be diabetes. It could be Alzheimer's. You ask them how many of these have you cured? If they answer zero, find a different doctor, okay? So let's talk about diabetes, right? Diabetes and inflammation. We now know that when your cells are inflamed, you become insulin resistant. That means your body is not processing carbohydrates well. And if it becomes really, really, really off, you get labeled with diabetes. But the root cause of it is the inflammation. It's what renders your cells unable to process the sugars. Sugars actually are not as evil as Facebook and Dr. Google makes it to be it really is actually the inflammation because if you're not inflamed at all, your body can actually process sugars very well, right? And so we look at Alzheimer's disease, same thing, inflammation and Alzheimer's disease, because we now know when your brain becomes inflamed, it activates a certain pathway of self-destruction basically. And also inhibits, um, there's a chemical that basically helps heal and protect your brain that is suppressed when your brain is inflamed, right? So if you don't want to lose your mind and be very forgetful in the future, you want to make sure that you focus on reducing the chronic systemic inflammation. Okay, right, so we look at just, again, inflammation even with depression. Now, obviously you can have psychological variables that lead to depression. However, there actually is a strong correlation between inflammation and the feelings of depression. It's actually one of the causes of depression.
right? So now let's go back to understanding what the selfish immune system is, right? So imagine we talked about one area of the boat where there's two holes, that area of the boat we call the brain, and the two holes has to do with chronic stress and sleep and acute stress, right? And so you have information on how you can sort of plug the holes. Now the other area is the immune system, right? So there's three holes in this area, right? We'll talk about the easiest one. The first hole is chemicals, right? Because when you're putting chemicals into your body, your immune system is the main system that's trying to detoxify to get rid of those chemicals. And so interestingly, the chemicals that's coming into you, mostly it's not coming from your food. Sure, you should eat organic foods and try to eat foods that don't have Roundup in it, which is most grains. However, most of the chemicals coming into your body is actually from the products that you're using, your soaps, your shampoos, your lotions. So one of the main things that you wanna do is you wanna reduce your overall chemical exposure and be aware of products and buy safer products, okay? So the next thing is gonna be your gut bacteria, right? And so your gut bacteria dictates in your gut health in the um, how inflamed the mucosa lining, the lining of your stomach, that dictates how inflamed you are because if the bacteria, if the healthy strains of bacteria are not vibrant in your intestines because the lining is inflamed, imagine this, imagine if the um, bacteria would be like, you're the bacteria your neighborhood is like the stomach lining of your intestines. Imagine if a tornado and a massive forest fire came all at once and just wrecked everything. Everything would be dead and there's no infrastructure. That's basically what happens when your stomach is inflamed. Your lining of your intestines are inflamed. So what causes that inflammation? Well, interestingly, the two most common causes of that is going to be non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, your Advil, your Aleve, Right, all the things that you would typically pop right, in response to having some kind of joint pain or a headache, they actually wreck your stomach. They cause inflammation in your stomach. And um, that's like you know tornado and fire coming in. Now, the other thing that also wrecks your stomach are antibiotics. Right? Excessive overuse of antibiotics, basically they kill the bacteria. That's like poisoning all the people in your neighborhood, right? putting poison in the water and all the people die. And so you need these people. We live symbiotically with the bacteria. That means we need the bacteria to help us stay alive, right? If we were to kill all the bacteria and then we kept it gone for a long time, we would die much faster. This is all research proven now. And so one of the things that you wanna do is you wanna make sure that your gut is as healthy as possible. So you wanna make sure that you put in a protocol in place to make sure you're healing your gut. Again, that's beyond the scope of this video. I didn't wanna go into exact solutions for each one of these because this would be like a two hour video, but know that you wanna you know, do things to heal your gut, right? And so last it's gonna be food selection, right? So you wanna make sure obviously you're eating you know, quote unquote healthy foods, but more importantly, you wanna eat anti-inflammatory foods. And this is where it gets tricky. There's science now showing that foods that's healthy may actually be very pro-inflammatory for you. So let's take a look at this results of the most recent person we tested uh, for inflammation. Basically what you're looking at is a list of foods. And so in here are foods that do not make this person inflamed. Here is a list of foods that makes this person severely inflamed. If you look at it, they're healthy foods, right? Flax seeds, that's a common thing. Um, almonds are healthy. Those are all healthy foods, moderate avocado, right? So this person can actually be trying to eat healthy by eating some avocados because it's got healthy fats. You know, maybe they're eating some flax seeds because it's got good fiber. Maybe they're eating spinach and strawberries to get their antioxidants. However, all of these foods here are very unhealthy for this person, mainly because it causes this person chronic systemic inflammation. And so ideally you wanna make sure that you're getting some type of testing done so you can understand which foods customize to your blood chemistry, your genetics, your DNA, and your bacteria that is uh, anti-inflammatory for you, right? So setting the intention, like I spoke about at this um, entrepreneur event, uh, is that you want to make sure you set the intention to eat anti-inflammatory, not just healthy, because healthy is too broad, right? To some people, healthy could be, I don't know, a keto diet, it could be intermittent fasting, it could be lots of vegetables, it could be no vegetables, who knows what's being sold out there as being healthy, but anti-inflammatory is very specific. It has not been tainted by mass media profit only marketing at the expense of the consumers, right? And so those, there you have it. Those are the five holes in the ship that you want to plug. And once you plug these holes, obviously there's still water in the boat. And then, you know, you're gonna to wanna to dump the water out. And those are all 
there's a whole process of reducing inflammation that you already have in your body and reversing it. And so if you're watching this video, this video is designed to help you understand the process now uh, and you understand what are the possible solutions. Now I'm going to do a workshop and a webinar to give you the exact systems of each solution because my goal is to not only to bring this awareness to you, but to make sure that you fully integrate this into your lifestyle because you know, knowing is awesome, but if you don't integrate it, there's no benefit, right? And so the goal is to fully integrate this into your lifestyle in what I call a loving way, not through willpower, determination, and sacrifice, but through love, right? Through a stressful or non-stressful way of integrating it into your health. And so I'm going to be sort of sharing that on this webinar. And so I'm sure somewhere near this video, I will somehow put a link somewhere that you can click on and you can register for the workshop to learn how do you fully integrate this using love into uh, this process of living anti-inflammatory because here's the benefit of living anti-inflammatory you will drastically cut your your disease risk down you're going to live longer this is all research proven now you don't you'll have less worry for things like cancer and alzheimer's and diabetes and hypertension and parkinson's and autoimmune diseases because what you're doing is you're getting rid of the the main fuel that causes that brews all diseases, all non-infectious diseases. This, I cannot stress how important this is because right now medicine is not treating the root cause. What we're talking about right now is getting at the root cause of diseases, right? So if you're looking to integrate those systems, click register for a workshop. I'll share all the information with you. Yes, on the workshop, I believe some people will be able to take the action and just do it all themselves. Some people, because you're busy, will need help on the workshop. Just to be clear, because my goal is to make sure you fully implement this, I will have for you done for you systems as well. My goal is to, you can choose, like you play, you choose the path in terms of what's most serving for you. You can say, I'm gonna do it all myself and I'll just give you the information. Or you're like, I'm busy, I want you to do it all for me or somewhere in between. All of those options will be available and you get to choose how you want to fully integrate this. So look forward to seeing you on that workshop. Now that you have an awareness of this, I'm relying you to be responsible to take action to resolve these things. Do not let these things linger. Do not continue to live with the risk of having these holes in your ship because you will be sinking. Now, if you're in your 20s and 30s, let's just say your body's healing fast enough where the waters never build up, but every decade into life, because your body does heal a little slower unless you're taking action on this, that water is building up and building up and the boat is sinking a little bit more and a little bit more. And so now's the time, no matter what age you're at, now's the time to plug those holes because you just put your body in a better condition to live longer with less disease risk. So register for the workshop, hope to see you there so you can get those systems I just talked about and you get to choose how you want to fully integrate this.